again. We've been streaming to absolutely no one. So I've just been talking for about half an hour to no one. To, to no one. You know, I did a song, I did a fucking dance, and, I, and I'm too out of breath, I'm too disheveled, and I'm too tired to repeat that. Maybe at the end of the show. And I hope this is live now. I hope I'm not just going to do the same half hour again. But to avoid that, we're just going to go straight into the audio with the halfway crook, right? The halfway crook, the guy who was Faith's boyfriend. Um, they were never in the same room physically. It all existed online, from what I understand. Um, now he's responding to Rand. Rand's crazy accusations. And I just wanted to play a bit of this, go into Mr. Vickers' tweets, and then maybe round off the show with a bit of the Dax defending pedophiles analysis there. So we've got a great show coming up. I'm sorry you've missed about a quarter of it. Like, I don't know. But let's get into this. So this is what he's put up on his Halfway Crook channel. Now, from this point forward, Halfway King... A halfway king. This man didn't do nothing wrong. Brother in arms. A halfway king. So let's go. Let's try and listen to his hot take here. Um, I've sort of skipped ahead to the point where he's started to, to look at and, and give his hot take on Rand. Um, before then, he sounds pretty defeated. He says that this is what my life is now. I guess I have to step up to the mark. He guesses he's going to have to become this channel where he calls out the lies of the gunt guard. He feels the light in his soul. He feels the crusade calling him forth. So this is what his life is now. Uh, I just want to say this before we begin. Don't feel defeated. Don't feel broken because we're here for you. Myself, PPP and the neat samurai, like we're absolutely here for you. There's no need to be sending the simping texts to Faith. There's no need to be going out of your head, out of your mind, because she's gone off with this gunted goblin, Ethan Ralph. You'll find better, I am sure. She is not the pinnacle. I am certain of that, a halfway king. So let's get into this. Um, so this is his voice. The growth that I've, I've gained. Um, anyways. This this person I've I've never heard of him Ranbot Ranbot this, this this person my I've man never heard of him Ranbot twenty twenty he's making up a bunch of shit so we're gonna go through um the so <clears throat> we'll get into what Rand's claims were but I think what he's uh, I've seen a bit of the video I think what he's got an issue with Rand about is that Rand said I mean try and get yourself into the zone here. He says that a halfway crook sent Ralph CP so that Ralph would send the Faith Vickers video. Now, this has come from Rand, a very close personal member of the Gunt Guard. Whether Rand is uh, derangedly confirming that Ralph has CP on his computer, or whether he's just in such a state of confusion, Rand, after the ammo box fell on his head, after he lost his child, after... He talk about a, a thousand bottles of whatever cheap liquor he's drinking. We're at this point now where he's saying that a halfway crook sent him CP and in turn Ralph sent the stinky thumb video. Like, I know we need to get in the zone, the twilight zone. It's been a long day. I know you've got to take a few crazy pills to get into this, but a halfway crook... He's not going to let this stand. He's just going to go at it full tilt and just say, Rand, you're a slanderous bastard. Fight me. You want to step up? You want to take this outside? Rambot? By all means. Bit by bit. Uh, what's up, Shamu? I hate this, by the way, that these streamers uh, do where they read the, the chat like this. Fuck um, the chat. That's not an unwillingness to not reach out because I, I have I have reached out. Um, but I've sent her one final email. I'm just going to turn yeah, it down. I'll, I'll just, I'll... So this poor guy is still going. He's still trying to simp for, for faith. Uh, we'll get into what the father is saying. The sort of crazy shit that's come out today about what's been going on with her trip back home and what happened there. Um, but this guy is still sending emails and Instagram DMs to try and woo her, try and win her heart. It's just not going to happen. 
and I and I personally wouldn't put the effort in if I was a halfway king. So Rand, what Rand is saying is fucking so, uh, insane. We're we're just gonna we're just gonna play. Yeah, play it, play it, play it. Like I said, we're gonna go uh, by this bit by bit. We'll do about ten and minutes of this because this, this goes on for a long ass time. But just note, of, right, that this guy, uh, this he's not alone. That I ever say about any of uh, what's going on. So he's saying he's promising that this will be the last thing he'll ever say about anything. This what's going on. I doubt that. You know, once he realizes he's got friends and he's got a circle of people that will not only help him through the dark times he's in, but also make him see the light and make him see that faith vickers isn't all that. Isn't isn't necessarily the best thing since it's all out spread and he shouldn't be putting all of these man hours into trying to, I don't know, woo this woman, buy her a bicycle made for two. I just want to move on. Yeah, move on, brother. Getting, um, move on. I, I suffer from, uh, well, I'm not, I'm not saying this as a... Right, so I hate it also as well when they reel off their mental illnesses before they give a take. Mess. Just be honest. I don't care about what, what, what afflicts you, man. It's your words that matter. I'm not. I, I don't know what <laughs> she said or what was said between the two, but I would... We're putting them on double speed. The, the, the perspective. Oh, anyways, sorry, you're getting into it. So we'll just... So we'll just... My qualities are absolute garbage. This is excruciating. Like, this is terrible. We thought we'd skip to the point where he was getting into the clip and he was ripping into Rand. Alas. Why are you buzzing? Come on. We're on double speed now. If I could turn this up to triple speed, it still wouldn't kill this dead air. Oh, no, I We're going to skip forward to a random point in the stream. I'm sorry, a halfway crook. I tried to give you your say, but your technical incompetence is matched only by Leo Pirate. Like, holy fuck, dude. Whoa. Okay, okay, I gotta stop you right there. Um, okay, okay, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go. So Rand has just said that the boyfriend has distributed Ralph CP. Like, moral crusading when you throw in a meth addict so that everybody feels bad for me when I'm not, in fact, a meth addict. Um, so that people feel bad for, worse for me in this situation. So... I just have to wonder, are you against the moral crusading, or are you only using it to further your your, your own narrative, to form your own narrative, that I, I, I did this when I never did? So that's the gist of it, right? So this guy is calling Rand out on his bullshit. Rand's bullshit is that we're all against... We're all against Ralph in my mansion, my absolute saviour, my king, the man I owe everything to. But now this is being exposed. Rand's whole point is that we're doing this because we hate money and we're feds and we're Jews as well. Just throw that in. And the boyfriend is just calling that out for all and sundry to see as a complete falsehood. Now, whatever Rand says to try and contort his argument, which is what the boyfriend is saying here, whatever he tries to say to fit his narrative is just completely off the wall, batshit insane. We've got too much of a show to go any further with the boyfriend. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We tried a halfway king, we tried. Look, if you wanna come on the show or do something by all means, like it doesn't matter. But at this moment in time, your technical incompetence, your, your dancing anime waifu uh, and various other things that have littered this stream have killed it, I'm afraid. Have killed that segment I was going to do on you, soz. So let's just jump into the Matthew Vickers tweets. So this guy, let's just do the quick fucking repost on Matthew Vickers. He says that we're liars and frauds and charlatans. Okay, right. I don't want necessarily, uh, I'm not gonna necessarily beg the guy to come on the show. The reality is myself and PPP did a two hour long dissection of his daughter's sex tape. So, I mean, that's fair game. That's fair game. 
But the reality of the situation is at the current moment in time is that he's tweeting and he's asking all of you out there to ask him questions that he'll field, he'll absolutely answer them. He's saying that he's reading Kiwi Farms. I just get in the mindset of that. Like, your, your daughter is dating Ethan Ralph and therefore, by association, you have to constantly be refreshing the Kiwi Farms to see what else the, the, the neat samurai are, are digging up on your daughter. Will there be another sex tape? Will there be an assortment of other images that leak from Ethan Ralph's phone that he tries to spin into something else? But there's some very interesting things that Matt Vickers has been saying. Um, let's get into this. I did bookmark this, but uh, whether it's actually going to come up, who the fuck knows? What a fucking disaster. So I've got to go to my bookmarks here. Uh, so I have two... Ma oh, here we go. Here we go. Matthew Vickers' timeline. Now, you can all look yourselves on uh, at Matt W. Vickers. That's the Twitter handle. There's some crazy shit that he's been saying. And it does explain a lot, to be honest. It fills in a lot of the gaps, more so than any of Squire of Gothos' digging. I imagine the Squire is going to be um, bolstering whatever infographics and whatever posts he puts out next with the information that Matt Vickers has provided here. Now, I've got a turn off the request for downloading the Twitter app. Let's scroll down. Here we go. He's So he's still tweeting as we speak, right? Um, we're going to go back about four hours ago to the point where he says, Faith's mother and I did everything we could. Flew across the country, got her in the hospital where she was when the sex tape was leaked, incidentally, spent over 10K and wasted 10 more days of our time, all on Faith's request, she grifted us good. Let's fucking dissect that, ladies and gentlemen. There's just so much there in one of many, many tweets that we're going to pick apart right here tonight. Faith's mother and I did everything we could. I'm going to assume, right, that... They did do that. They seem to be, him and uh, his wife, they seem to be quite a coherent unit. They've been together for, what, 22 years, something crazy like that. They've had a very, very good time there, where they're from. They've brought their daughter up right, from what I can see, from what I understand. He's working, he's got his own business. He seems like an upstanding pillar of the community, and I don't know necessarily about the wife, but it seems to me that unlike the other redneck trash that would happily sign their daughter away to Ethan Ralph because that bitch gonna be famous! These guys are looking at Ethan Ralph with horror. They want her back and they're gonna do everything they can to bring her back. Next sentence, he flew across the country, him and his wife. So they've flown to Guntsville, Virginia. They've been to the Crack Shack or maybe it was like an Arby's where they had to pick her up because Ralph wouldn't let them near the Crack Shack. Maybe Ralph had to drive her there and there was like a meeting where Ralph handed over the child bride to her parents in the Arby's car park. So they flew across the country at their own expense and they got her in hospital. In hospital! Now, it's not because Ralph has been beating her, which is what I thought when I first saw this. I thought, oh shit, you know, this is getting really fucking bizarre now. I thought, oh shit, he's been beating her, there's been something going on. It seems to me that she's been checked into a psychiatric hospital or some sort of rehab centre where she can get off the booze and the drugs that Ralph is giving her, right? And while she's in hospital, Matt Vickers is saying the video was then leaked. The video was then leaked. So this is the timeline, according to Matt Vickers, who I believe 100%. This man, next to Ethan Ralph and Diddler Dax and the whole fucking cabal, this man is a saint. This man is a pillar, a beacon of light that should be listened to. And, and not harassed, I'm going to say. Like, I'm not going to fucking pillory this man. This man seems to be the cleanest of clean in this whole affair. What his daughter does is her business, right? I'm a great believer in the idea that parenting stops at a certain level. He hasn't stopped parenting her. He's still there for her, clearly. But what she does in her own time, when she's been locked away in a bedroom, on the internet, being groomed by Ethan Ralph and various other grifters, 
I mean, that's not... That's out of his control. That is out of his control. And we're in the reality now where... I mean, I say to my friends all the time, I don't want a daughter. When I have kids, I just don't want a daughter. Because this could happen. This is like a nightmare realised for, for every prospective father out there. Will my daughter grow up and be sitting on the gunt? Will my daughter grow up and be on the gunt there? Will she wipe, ladies and gentlemen? Harrowing questions that we have to ask ourselves as potential parents. So... I know it's a sexist thing to say, but I don't necessarily want a daughter. That's just me. That's just my real take on this situation because something like this could happen. She seems to be from a very middle class, very solid upbringing. And she's rebelled in that situation to the point where here she is, right? So they've checked her into a hospital, psychiatric hospital we're going to go in put all our chips on there. Maybe it was a rehab center, who knows, but I'm, I'm gonna lean with psychiatric hospital because I would need to check into a fucking psychiatric clinic if I were dating Ethan Ralph and half of the shit that's happened to me in the fucking two weeks that she's been together with Ethan Ralph had occurred, right? So, Ralph leaks the video whilst she's in hospital after he's handed her over in the RV's car park to the parents. Then he decides to leak the video. Now, when, once that was said, this is what I think. I think Ralph did this to exercise control. He didn't do this as revenge porn, even though that's exactly what it is. But his intentions weren't even to prove to a halfway king that he wasn't a cuck. His intentions were purely to fuck her in the head. To just fuck her in the head while she's in hospital so she feels that she has no options now. She'll be too ashamed to go back to her parents because her parents have seen her stinky anus. And now she's forever going to be shackled to Ethan Ralph. It's classic coercion. It's classic control. I hate to be real, but this is what's happening. This is what's happening. In about 10 years' time, when I'm appearing on true life, true crime programs, documentaries, where I'm having to give hot takes on Ethan Ralph, the, the pedophile and, the, and, 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 and Jahans, the mass murderer, the beast of Bodmore, whatever the fuck, these are going to be the hot takes that I'll be saying for money on CBS drama, CBS reality. That's what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. He spent over 10K of his own money. Now, I did a bit of a Google search. It doesn't cost 10K to fly out to Guntsville, Virginia. It costs a sizable sum, I'm not going to lie. And that has been compounded by COVID-19, hacking up the prices. But he's obviously spent more money, upwards of about, let's say, 8K, upwards of about 8K, somewhere around that region, checking her into this hospital, ensuring that his daughter gets better. This is a caring, honest father. I don't care what anyone says. This man has his head switched on, and through thick and thin, he's obviously going to be there for his daughter. So he spent all of this money, and... It seems to me that he's spent 10 days of his time out there with Faith, trying to make her better, maybe at her daughter's bedside in hospital, various other things. This man is a fucking saint. This man has done far more than, I'm going to be honest, that I would do in this situation. If my daughter had reached that age and she'd gone off and rebelled and gone with someone like Ethan Ralph, God fucking forbid, disinherited, out of the will, goodbye, don't come back. That's just me. Now, is that cold? Is that cold? Not for me. Not for me. Because you've got to draw lines in the sand. Co people constantly tell me that you'll feel differently when you have children. I assume I probably will. But there are, have to be lines in the sand. And you can't anticipate stuff like this. Now, we all hear fathers tell their kids, if you do this, I won't speak to you, or if you do this, this is bad, and da 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 if you grow up and you marry this person, it'll be bad, da 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 But there's nothing in the vocabulary back in, what, 19 or, or even 2000, back in 2000, there's nothing in the vocabulary when he's telling his little daughter there, if you grow up and date an e-celebrity, I'll disown you. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there about that. If you date Ethan Rao, like, there's nothing in there. There's nothing in the guidebook about that. Hopefully there is going to be soon. Hopefully future generations will learn from this relationship between Ethan Ralph and this child bride. But 
I mean, Matthew Vickers was really charting uncharted territory. Let's be honest. Let's be real, ladies and gentlemen. So he says that he wasted, and his wife wasted 10 days of their time, all on Faith's request. Now, that's fucking important. All of this was on Faith's request. She called her mother and her father, according to Matthew's tweets here, because she wanted their help. She wanted them to fly out. She wanted them to check her into hospital and get her better. This was on Faith's request. She couldn't have consented to Ralph leaking the sex tape because she's checked into hospital. Now, he says here in a moment of anger, and I assume he'll regret this, or maybe he'll delete the tweet, or maybe he's just trying to deliver some p tough punishment and tough love. He says that she grifted us good, right? She grifted us good. So, I don't know. Like, I'm going to be honest. She's your daughter, man. Like, there's, there's a various fucking... I, I can only imagine what you're going through. And this is a fair statement, right? She seems to do this with a lot of people, manipulate them, various other things. But the reality is, right, she's your daughter. While she did grift you and do stuff like this, I don't think it's necessarily her. I feel as though she hasn't got a choice. I feel as though when she was in hospital and she was starting to see the light and she thought, oh, I can fly out of Guntsville, Virginia, I can go back home to my parents and I can live a normal life. Maybe I can go to college or do something with my life just in general away from Ethan Ralph, away from the internet, away from Halfway King. I imagine that when she was just in that moment, Ralph leaks a sex tape, breaks her will, makes her feel ashamed to go back to her family and her friends at home. It's control, it's coercion. Now she's going to be shackled to him until she wises up and escapes. Joseph Fritzl style, you know? Maybe you'll hear about it more later on tonight. <laughs> I'm in disbelief, quite frankly, but here we are. We're just going to carry on with the show. Crazy ass email. Whoa. Um, you'll see what I mean. If it doesn't come to fruition, I'll tell the story, but fuck. Anyway, next tweet. Matthew Vickers. Obviously, I was mistaken. This will be dealt with even if Faith is too stupid or crazy to know that she was a victim. So the father's going to deal with this now. The father's going to call the police. The father is going to protect his daughter. And props to this fucking mensch. This absolute mensch. The father is going to deal with this. Because she, in her own mind, she's rebelling. She's... I, I imagine... Look, I imagine she's feeling quite ashamed. Especially that a, a mother and father have seen her sex tape. Like, I imagine she feels quite ashamed. And it's not just a sex tape, an ordinary sex tape with someone her age that she could maybe live, get, get over when she reaches her mid-twenties or into her thirties or whatever. The reality is she sat on the gunt of some mid-thirties, elephant skin, jello, jello gunt there. So it's just shameful. It's shameful all round. It's a shameful situation. But... Whether she's too stupid or crazy to know that she is a victim, I will deal with this. This is what the father is saying. And this is a fucking king. This is a mensch. This is somebody that realises that this is a phase in his daughter's life. And ultimately, people need to be punished for doing this shit. He realises the, the extent of the law, I assume. He realises that Ralph committed a crime. And... It's not just his daughter that he has to think about. It's the other daughters that Ralph is going to groom, bring to Guntsville, Virginia, and have them sit on his gunt there. He continues. A pit option one. A psychic James Bond ha hacked a phone and released a single incriminating file at precisely the right moment. Option two, a drunk guy broke the law. It's option two, ladies and gentlemen. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Ralph will have you believe that mundane Matt Kraut hacked the phone and leaked the, leaked the sex tape. No. 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 We will not be gaslit. We will not stand for this. And nor will Matt Vickers, the father of the child bride, nor will this man. He says... A drunk guy broke the law, and he is going to deal with this. He's going to deal with it, ladies and gentlemen. He's stepping up. He's doing his duty. Now, whether the daughter will hate him for doing that, whether she'll rebel even further, 
don't matter because Matt's standing for what's right and what's just and ultimately what's fair in society. People shouldn't be allowed to break the law in such a flagrant manner in the way that Ethan Ralph has done and be able to sit on your show with Andy Kokeski, Beardson, and Bibble, and continue like nothing happened. Pretend to be swatted. Pretend that your hand's been slapped by the long arm of the law so that nobody calls the police on your crimes. Oh, well, they already came to visit me, Gator, so, uh, so I guess I got away with it. I got my selfie there where I'm looking like a firm. No, 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 absolutely not. He sees through the bullshit, does Matt Vickers. Next tweet. We're doing the full line-by-line -line analysis of these tweets because this is fucking gold, ladies and gentlemen. For your information, I will answer questions that I legally can on this matter now. So, uh, he's fielding questions. He's happy to answer your questions on his Twitter. I'm just going to say, don't be too disrespectful to the, to the great man. Don't boo the great man. Just be respectful, be pleasant to the fellow because he's going through a fucking rough time. And he says there that he'll answer questions he legally can. So he's obviously contacted the authorities, the relevant authorities, and they're building a case. He's catching a case. The green lat is on Ethan Ralph's ass. And I seriously hope to God that there is some sort of retribution paid for Ethan Ralph ruining this man's daughter's life. Is it just me? Is it just me that wants a bit of fucking justice to happen in the world? Let's go. <clears throat> I will answer these questions for no other reason than to clear our family's good name. Now I'm gonna speak for myself and a few other people here by saying that you don't need to clear your family's name. Your family's name is purely intact. It's simply the one rogue element that's been co-opted by these dark voice, dark forces led by Diddler Dax and Ghetto Gunther that have done this. Nobody is going to sully your family's good name. We're not going to boo you, the great man. Instead, we recognise that she's come from good stock and her, her, what, dalliance with Ethan Ralph? Ethan Ralph is a guy whose name is Dirt. It's not even a proper surname. It's two first names, like an animal, like an animal, ladies and gentlemen. Some real inbred shit there with the two first names, LARPing as a real name, like holy fuck, holy fuck. Let's go, any crude or inappropriate comments, I'll just ignore and block, fair enough. So don't waste your time, please. So he's been pleasant there, it's a very, honest request this man like it's one thing right to just ignore this just shut off the internet just pretend that it's not happening just ignore your daughter's calls and stuff like this it's another thing to actually be open honest be a beacon of truth be a pillar of the community and actually say i'm gonna answer your questions openly and honestly this is more than the gun would do this is more than dax diddler dax would do in the fucking whole cabal there this is more than fucking Dame would fucking do. This guy is purely saying, just don't be fucking, don't send, you know, my daughter's stinky asshole to me and we'll be fine. I'll answer your questions, whatever they are, whatever they are. The first answer to one of the questions, he says that the first question I'll answer, though, is that Faith does not take meth. For whatever her faults are, that's not one of them. Now... There's been speculation as to whether she took it with the boyfriend, the meth boyfriend, a halfway king. Um, that can be dismissed out of hand immediately upon the knowledge, receipt of the knowledge, that her and the boyfriend never were in the same space physically. It was purely an online relationship. So we can rule that out of hand. Now, I'm not going to rule out of hand any sort of drugs or alcohol that Ralph has given her. Like, I don't know what he's given her. I don't know what prescription medication he's given her. We can only go by AIDS account, the the 40 year old alien lady that cleaned Ralph's bedroom up there for a few weeks when during the coronavirus lockdown, the rebound, you know, that girl, woman. 
we can only go by her accounts and saying that Ralph stole her medication, her prescription medication, when she came up there. Uh, Ralph has responded in kind in the worst, most degenerate, reprehensible way possible by saying that uh, she gave me a blowjob and then she uh, she stuck a tongue in my ass. That's that's what he's been saying. So real classy, real classy gentleman there, real man of the South, ladies and gentlemen, real respectable person there. Um, so yeah, okay, she doesn't take meth. I'll buy that, I'll buy that. But I'm going to say that you don't know half of the shit she's been taking with Ethan Ralph. Like, you just don't know. I don't know. No one knows. But I can imagine it's pretty fucking illicit and it's pretty fucking bad. Now, he says here that obviously I am watching the Kiwi Farms boards. If you guys have questions that I can answer, don't bother sitting there theorizing. Just ask. I'm not going to get caught up on Kiwi Farms nonsense. So unlike the Halfway King, he's not going to set up a Kiwi Farms account. He's not going to post a picture of himself holding his tag under the handle saying, Hi, Kiwi Farms. He's not going to do that. This man is a based boomer. He's going to answer and field all questions via Twitter and Skype and MSN Messenger and MySpace. This is the... We're in the fucking rules of combat here and the rules of conduct purely state that things should take place on IRC and various other long dead boomer platforms but he's going to happily field your questions on twitter if you're respectful um but it's just bizarre to me that he is actually you know reading the kiwi farms thread like just try and process that try and process that you're a 50 something year old man you're on your own business you've been married to your wife for a long period of time for, by all accounts you seem to be a decent upstanding person and now you've been sucked into this world? Now you're having to derangedly refresh Kiwi Farms every second to see if they're going to slander your daughter or slander you? I'm just going to give you the same advice that I give all of them. Don't read it, ladies and gentlemen. Just don't read it. Like, there's no need for Matt Vickers to be reading this shit because all he's going to be seeing is memes of his daughter's asshole, memes of the jelly gun, memes that are going to hurt him, I assume, after a long period of time, because you can't switch that off. You can't desensitize yourself to something like that, someone that's your own flesh and blood. That's just me. That's just me. But um, to prove his identity, he's done the most base thing I could possibly imagine. This is the most base thing that I could possibly imagine. So instead of like posting a selfie of himself, holding a, holding a sign saying, this is me, Kiwi Farms. This is me, Twitter. This is me, Kraut. Uh, Jarbo, what he does is he puts up like his gun permit, a photo of his gun permit, you know, just in case anyone's got any ideas. And he says, here's for the doubters, because I thought this would be more fun. And it is fun. Like this man, we already know that he's got an eye for Kino. We already know that he was probably making that guy with the glasses submissions back in 2009. But this man does have an eye for Kino. He says, here we go. This is for the doubters because I think it would be more fun. He posts his gun license. He says, a receipt earlier with a date and time. Um, we've just scrolled down a bit too far. Uh, we've got Faith's captive phone. You know it by the Obama-style Michael Scott case. So he's posted Faith's phone, right? That he's had to confiscate off her. That he's had to just take away and confiscate. No, no more internet for you, daughter. Uh, and uh, his Utah CCW. And he's just parentheses that, haha. So this man has an eye for Kino. This man has an eye for Nectar. So big up for fucking Matt Vickers. Sufficient question mark. It is more than sufficient. Like, based, based boomer. But beyond the memes here, we're in real fucking territory where... We're going to have to go a bit gravely in our voice here as we read the next tweet. Let's scroll up. This was about... So here's where he addresses me. He says that, Oh, and I believe it was PPP and Godwinson who claimed that I was a guest on their show at some point. No! Most of you called BS on that, and you were correct. You win points. I did not speak with anyone. He says, I might be wrong, 
and feel free to correct me. So I don't know if his, because he's been browsing Kiwi Farm so much because his daughter's been sucked into this world. I don't know if he's also been taking the crazy pills. I don't know if we've all, all been fucking sucked into the Twilight Zone. We've all quantum leaped into this universe. We're all walking along the bridge of yesterday's Enterprise and we're all doubting reality, but it sounds like he's doubting reality. It says that, you know, I might be wrong that the fake me didn't appear on the show. It could have been the real me. Who the fuck knows? Who cares? I have entered a world that I have no comprehension of. Uh, the sky is made of custard. And I believe in the bumblebees and the black oil virus. But yeah, look, he wasn't on the show. We cleared this up within five hours of the show premiering. It was Turk February doing the best performance of his life. Real fucking outstanding performance. Um, we did send out like a, a reply to Matt Burke because we said, if you did want to come on the show, the invite's always there. We're not going to turn you away. We'll treat you respectfully. There'll be no issues and we'll comply with all of your demands and all of your conditions. If you ever wanted to have your say. No pressure, man. Like, no pressure at all. Um, <clears throat> but in lieu of that, in lieu of that, we'll probably keep using the fake dad. We probably will. If the time comes... And we we have a good show. We'll probably use the fake dad in lieu of the real dad. That's just the the rules of Kino and Nectar, ladies and gentlemen. That's just how it goes in the Kino drone, ladies and gentlemen. He continues. Jesus, Kiwi Farms, people. Just ask. My Facebook page is not at all an indication of how many guns I own. <laughs> I own so many more than that. If I had a FFL in CA, California, I assume that is, for six years, another clear indication that I'm a law-abiding, solid citizen, FFL is easy, CDL in California or CA is not. So yeah, <laughs> like this man has a fucking small armory in his bedroom there, in his basement. He's going to go fucking Death Wish Charles Bronson taken style on any fucking wannabe contenders to Ethan Ralph's crown. And he makes a valid point, like he wouldn't be owning all of these guns if he wasn't a solid citizen, which he is, like this man is. We're going to refresh the page just to see if he's been tweeting since we started the show. Um, but he makes valid points, like there's no disputing this man's character, this man's honesty. And above all, like this man really does have a have some sort of love and affection for his daughter because he wouldn't be doing this he just wouldn't be doing this he'd have done the redneck thing of go out and be famous make a lot of babies keep us rich in our old age faith suckle that gun i imagine that's what nora's parents did in a different accent all the way from india trying to trying to use the internet celebrity of ethan ralph to Boss of their claims. Now, shall we go on the tweets and replies, ladies and gentlemen? Let's go on the tweets and replies tab if it will load. So he's been replying to your questions 14 minutes ago. He says that there was never any accusation or even suspicion that such abuse ever happened when she was in our care. But there has been an accusation from Ethan Ralph. Like, Ethan Ralph did tweet you, quote tweet you at that to all of his followers and said that you... Matt Vickers beat your daughter. That's what he said. Like, I'm not stirring the pot, even though I am. And that's exactly what he said. While she has been gone, my faith has been gone, she has claimed to her mother and I to have been raped freshman year of high school. Oh, fuck. And supposedly made other claims that happened after she left to Chris. So Chris is the halfway crook, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. But it, there's a whole fucking sordid history here that I'm not even going to try and plunge into. That's for Squire. That's for the Squire of Gothos. That's for various other A-logs to do. Uh, it, this depresses me, quite frankly. He says that my worry is not the unintentional consequences from her intentional actions so much as the intentional consequences for her intentional actions. Like, I'm mind-fucked here, these takes... Burning your parents so hard on purpose, not to mention little brothers. That's not going for the kill. That's going for the pain. The pain. 
So she's burning bridges, according to Matt, her father. She's acting out, she's lashing out, she's a teenager, she's rebelling. But instead of doing so in a way that will just burn the bridge and we can maybe fucking re-erect it earlier, uh, later on in the day, instead she's hurting them. She's inflicting pain on her mother and father. That's the reality of this situation. This man is has gone all of his life being a solid citizen, being a solid member of the community, and now this has happened. I wouldn't be able to deal with it, I'm going to be honest. And I can only imagine what, what he's going through, him and his wife. Are they staying up late at night waiting for the phone to ring, waiting to fly back out to Guntsville, Virginia to try and save her again? Or it, It's real fucking bad shit. What can I say? It's real bad shit. He continues... I am not 100% no, but I am 99.9% .9 sure that she's not in Gunsville, Virginia now. She will be soon, because I know that one, she wanted to go back for some reason, and two, he was willing to take her back. Desperate Ralph, desperate Dan there, with his fucking empire of sand, of dirt. Guntsville, Virginia, the crack shack made of fucking polystyrene with the dying mother next door through the paper cigarette thin walls with pixel perler art of Gator on the wall and Sedan who fucked off a long time ago. But maybe you'll come back. Will you come back to the name? Will you clean it up for me one last time, Sedan? What a fucking disaster, ladies and gentlemen. Her father says, poor choices on both their parts. On both their parts. I'm going to keep peddling my take and saying that Ralph is a coercive motherfucker. He is obviously considerably older than her. He's been married before. He's been in various other relationships that have been incredibly toxic and burned the woman upon exit. He's not a pleasant individual to associate with, so I will say that the blame is far more on his part than it is on hers, right? I know she's a Black Lives Matter activist, I know she does some crazy shit, but she's still 18, let's not forget. Her life is ahead of her, you do make choices, you do regret those choices when you grow older, you try and remedy whatever you did in the past. This is what happens in the grand cycle of life. I'm not going to write her off until she's Ethan Ralph style, wobbling about, elephant skin, eating burgers from the trash, stealing his own mother's medication. That's the, the point where you, you write someone off. There's a long way to go yet, I hope. Fingers crossed, for heaven's sake. Maybe she will get worse, or maybe she'll get better. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I don't even know. These people, these people, fuck. He says that his, he says that my monitoring of Kiwi farms was a nauseating means to an end. <laughs> oh. He says that my monitoring of Kiwi Farms was a nauseating means to an end. Now, if Josh doesn't put that in the fucking Kiwi Farms banner, <laughs> if Josh doesn't put that little description of his site in the Kiwi Farms banner, then Josh is disowned. Because that is the greatest description <laughs> of Kiwi Farms I have ever heard in my life. Monitoring Kiwi Farms was a nauseating means to an end. Nothing more. Posters break down and decimate information from the Ralph retort, and frankly, I've not the stomach, patience, or ability to remain awake to watch during or to watch his show. <laughs> so, I think he's complimenting the Squire of Gothos and various other posters on that site, per Perisposity and um, various other posters on the site, Josh. I think he's complimenting you for giving digests because Matt's just too fucking sane to sit through Ethan Ralph's three hours of cope. He's got an eye for Kino and Nectar. I imagine Lee's probably trying to catch up on Mad Men or The Sopranos or The Wire there. I imagine he's trying to catch up on those shows on Netflix there. 
He hasn't got the patience or the wherewithal to sit through Ralph's Cope stream because it is boring. It's a shit show. It's awful. In the words of Mike David, stop with this kill stream. It's shit. And it is shit. It's not even entertaining. The man can't carry a show. None of the five co-hosts can carry the show. Not even Mark Collett can carry the show. The only one that could reasonably carry the show was Zidane, and he fucked off a long, long time ago. Gator, he seems to have gone AWOL. Now, I don't know if Gator's coming back. It seems to me that he's taking a break. He's actually focusing on his real life a bit more. And I can't really fault Gator's actions and behavior during this entire cycle post-sex tape. I know he went on with Augie, the man who streams from his mother's closet. The man with, like, twiglet arms. The man who looks ill, right? I, I know he went on with him, and I know he did his best job to try and clean it up, but he also did a solo stream after that where he did say quite plainly that Ralph fucked up. This was a big mistake, and he didn't do a war ski where he just applauded like a seal all of Ralph's actions. No, it, 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 Gator grew a fucking spine for once, and he, he spoke out, and it was pretty fucking based, let's be honest. It was pretty fucking based. So I can't really fault Gator's actions. Now, whether Ralph has disowned him, whether Ralph has put him on a suspension, whether Ralph is going to leave him on the bench going forward, who knows, right? The best thing I would do is if I were Gator, like, I wouldn't come to our side. You know, <laughs> no one wants you in full fag forever and all of this. Just go your own way. Like, you've got an audience of people that happily like your stuff on Twitter and think that you're great. So just pander to them and fade away into obscurity. Don't defect. Don't be a snake. Just go. Just go. If you've really wised up, don't defect. Just be a man and fucking ride off into the sunset. That's my advice. That's my advice. I do think Gator will come back because, I mean, people will keep asking in this chat, Ralph's chat, where's Gator? I know, I know, I know it's a sentence that's never been said before, but they'll be begging for Gator to come back, just like they did with Zidane. So I hope he does come back. You know, I hope Gator really hasn't wised up, because I want the cycle to continue. I, I just want the, the cope, I want the endless hours of content, but maybe he has wised up, maybe Gator ain't coming back anymore. Maybe Gator's fucked off and he's never coming back. Maybe he's gonna visit Zidane there in Cuba. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but, but yeah, he continues. Uh, Matt Vickers, the father of the child bride. Uh, he says, make no mistake, the girl definitely has mental illness. Nothing else could explain her behavior, but she's not incompetent. And without that, she cannot be committed so far as I know. So I imagine what the question there was, why haven't you tried to section her? <laughs> you know, why haven't you tried to section her? Yeah, I suppose it's very difficult in today's day and age to try and section someone, especially when you've got all of this shit, all of these pronouns, all of these letters that are dictating societal norms. So whereas in the past, Matt could probably institutionalize his daughter and say, can you make her better again, please? Can you keep her here for a while until she does get better? Don't let her check out on her own accord like she just has done. Whereas in the past, that could probably happen. No, I, I, I think we're on shaky ground. And it's a shame. It really is a shame. Bring that back. Bring back institutional authority over the mentally ill. That's just me. That's just me. Don't use better help. Don't use YouTube e-grifters talking about mental illness. No, you need professional help. Professional help. He continues. She lied about both the whole time now like, i don't know what both is uh, I, I can't be asked to actually look as soon as she got to the hospital after she threatened self-harm so she's threatened to kill herself that's why matt and his wife have had to fly down to guntsville virginia she's threatened to kill herself because of ethan ruff <laughs> like why would she even go back to this man she called ralph at the earliest opportunity she's been brainwashed she's in a cult She's being coercively controlled. Doesn't sound like a girl who wants help to me. Sounds like a girl who uses the illness as a means to an end. <laughs> now, whether the father is really wising up to what's been going on with his daughter, who knows? But it sounds to me like he's had a fucking enough. He's had, he's had enough. He's just had enough at this point. But it's a very difficult thing to shed a tie between a father and a daughter, and I don't believe that this is the end. I still believe that come the 
unfortunate time when Matt and his wife pass away. She's going to be there arranging the funeral, telling everyone what a great person he was, right? I don't believe it's the end. And I don't believe that Ralph should be allowed to make this the end between a father and their daughter, right? This should not be allowed to happen. And Ralph should certainly not be allowed to be responsible for that. Intervene, FBI. Intervene, police. Fuck's sake. So, so he just says here, I stand corrected. I don't know about what, but he says that now Mrs. Vickers is going to be pissed when I got to buy a new gun. So he's going to buy another gun. So Matt Vickers is buying another gun. Let's fill up the armory. You can't have too few of the guns there. The whole grifting cabal. So he says here that, so here's the thing, without defaming Faith, because I do not know what is wrong with her, but I don't think that she thinks depression is her problem. Shortly after she left, we sent her money to see a therapist. I assume that's the 10K. And she asked to get more. She asked for to get meds. She did neither. She did neither. So she hasn't got meds for herself and she hasn't seen a therapist. So what did she use the money for? Is it for Ethan Ralph? Is it for Black Lives Matter? Is it to funnel lemons through to the D-Live stream on Ethan Ralph's show to make him look like a winner? Who knows where that money's going, but I can only assume that it's gone to very, very fucked up sources. Uh, he continues, he's already provided his identification. How would an audio appearance proved anything? You're blocked. <laughs> so this is in response to someone asking if you'll come on to an interview. Invite's always there. No bother, my friend. Uh, now he's responding to Josh. Refutations to my assertions are welcome to be destroyed at any time. So he's, he's getting on his boomer box there. This is the last one we're going to read. Uh, before July the 8th, 2020, so far as I knew, Faith was a completely different person than the person she is today. I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. But it seems that Ralph knows one version. Chris knows one version. The meth boyfriend, uh, halfway king. Friends know one version. It's like Faith is a multiverse. <laughs> I'm not sure who the real Faith is, if there is one. Yeah, it's a pretty fucking crushing reality that you've sired a thought, right? That you know, you've sired a thought in the current year and you're doubting who your actual daughter is. It's a pretty crushing reality, but I don't know. He says again that Faith is quite skilled with both a shotgun and she's formally trained in basic pistol and personal protection inside and outside the home. Sad she can't be around guns anymore. So she can't, you know why she can't be around guns? Because Ralph can't fucking legally own a gun. Because he's a felon. Because he's a criminal. And he's not allowed to legally own a gun. So Matt Vickers is lamenting that. He's lamenting that his daughter can't protect herself in a way that she's been taught to. The way that she's been trained in since she was a child. So <laughs> he continues, if I shot Ralph... I'd be... T <laughs> I, can't. I can't. Like, this is breaking me. If I shot Ralph, I'd be doing 25 to life for murder. I have four other children to consider in this fiasco. And if flying across the country, spending over 10k at least, and remaining for seven extra days to try and fix this isn't enough, I don't know what else you expect. <laughs> He's gone above and beyond to try and get his daughter back. Short of actually putting a bullet in Ralph's head, which no one's wanting him to do, and which he recognises that even if he did want to do it, he'd be serving 25 to life and he'd neglect his children. And because he's such a great man, because he's such a great father, he recognises that he has to be selfless. He has to not take personal retribution. Instead, he's got to look after the children that remain and try and make them better. Because he's such a fucking great man, he's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. And Ralph is such a coward that he knows... He knows he can act with impunity because this is how a degenerate white trash alcoholic behaves. He's only going to get worse with age, by the way. We all think he's probably got about five years left in him before he ODs, before he ends up in an alcoholic coma, Ethan Ralph. But 
just think of the damage and the harm he's going to do to the world around him in those five years of life force he's got remaining. So he says here that I'm never going to go on Godmanson's show. The purpose of that would be entertainment, and I do not find any of this entertaining. But when you put 18 years into raising a kid and find out she's been telling people for years that she's been abused, that's a few levels below screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not entertaining really for Matt. It's entertaining for me and the neat samurai watching at home because we can disassociate from the shit show. We have no real horses in this race. We're not tied by blood to the events that are going on. This is just a shit show, a dumpster fire that we can eat our popcorn around. But for Matt, like, it isn't entertaining because this is his life. This is his daughter. This is his family. This is his name on the line. And it's a pretty fucking bad shit show to be associated with. He says, I have no goal to include... So now he's responding to T-Clips. Like, T-Clips, give the man a fucking break. Like, holy fuck. I have no goal to increase anyone's viewership. Faith's mother and I both told her that if she chose to go back to Ralph, she was choosing to be an adult, and I told her that I would tell the truth about our family because we don't deserve the lies. We have not earned it. And you don't deserve, by the way, to be called a child abuser, to be openly shamed by Ethan Ralph, to be slandered by Ethan Ralph by him saying you've been hitting your child. No, that's not allowed. <laughs> that's just not okay, you know? And I believe you 100% lock, stock and barrel, Mr. Vickers. You didn't put a finger on... You didn't lay a finger on that daughter. No. You were, you were an upstanding, decent father. You taught her how to protect herself. You gave her all of the training. And like you say, for 18 years, you knew one side of her. And now it seems to be the case that she's been a female Randy Stare in a bedroom doing some crazy shit that we don't know about yet. The tip of the iceberg we're on at this moment in time. And her association with Ralph is the most toxic and fucked up yet. Yet it's brought this side to it. It's been a wake up call. It's brought the side to life. Don't give up on her. Obviously, there's a long, long way to go before the bond between a father and a daughter is completely severed. But at this moment in time, I understand where you're coming from. You don't deserve these lies to be hurled at you, especially from people like Ethan Ralph, and you deserve the right to clear your name, and you absolutely deserve the right of reply to respond to these slanderous claims. Round of applause for Mr. Vickers. He continues, My favourite gun is the Weatherby Orion. And he just goes on, My favourite handgun. I'm very partial to my Beretta. But for my summer carry, I very much prefer a car, a car, a car, nine millimeter. What a based fucking boomer. And we're just going to give up now because he's still tweeting, still tweeting quite profusely there. He's answering your claims, your questions. Be respectful. Don't send him his daughter's stinky asshole. Like he doesn't need to see that. But he seems to be perfectly willing to answer your questions on a great many subjects about his guns, about his daughter, about his wife and various other things. This man is a saint, a king, and should not be forgotten. Now we're going to try and just round off the show with the Dax Dick Masterson audio. So bear with me here as I have to awkwardly type in Say No to Gino on YouTube via the television. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. There's only so much I can do. We're going to try and find this. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go. Let's go. So this is going to be an analysis of the audio. Uh, Josh versus Dax from yesterday. Myself and PPP, we did a very good show on that. Let's be honest. Uh, it wasn't bad. Where we gave our takes about 10 minutes after the show ended between Josh and Dax. We called them out as diddlers. We said that... Josh had the moral high ground, uh, and the whole thing is deplorable and disgusting. But what was lacking was actually playing the audio of Dick Masterson saying these crazy things. Now, it's 25 minutes long. Uh, I'm going to do my best not to keep pausing it, but I'll be commentating over it. Now, if you're too autistic to try and... Uh, Say no to G. It, it, it keeps coming up with autocorrects, Gino. You need to change your channel name to something a bit more fucking searchable. Holy fuck. Say no to Gino. Watch this not load now. What? If this doesn't load now, it's over. It's done. Fuck Gino forever. 
say no to Gino. Here we go. So we are searching now. Here we go. Right. <clears throat> So this video, uh, Dick Matheson, Lollicon Defender Extraordinaire, this is the, the full clip of where he's defending paedophilia. He's talking about all of this crazy shit to Joshua Connor Moon, owner and proprietor of the Kiwi Farms. <laughs> right, so Gino is loading up the, the Wikipedia definition of what Lollicon is. It's a gateway to paedophilia. It's an attraction to prepubescent children. It's fucking terrible. Um... And, and if Wikipedia can BTFO you, what 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 hope is there? Let's skip forward. An illustration. Yeah! <laughs> it's the simp show. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, that louder is funny, and this is what a professional comedian sounds like. And they could turn yeah, somebody they, here. They could turn. It could turn somebody. Yeah, yeah it's some violent video games. Yeah. You can't give. You, you can't play fucking Wolfenstein. You're gonna go escape from prison and shoot a bunch of fucking Nazis. So uh, let's just pause it. His argument there is that if you are playing violent video games, that's the equivalent to, to reading Lollicon and stuff like this because, you know, you, you're not all going out and shooting up schools because you're playing GTA. It's a completely false equivalency, let's just be honest. Like, these pedophiles that are masturbating to drawings uh, to try and make them acceptable are, are, are very much on the boundaries of the law. Very much on the boundaries of the law. As far as I'm concerned, playing GTA and Wolfenstein isn't on the boundaries of the law. I'm not going to be looking over my shoulder playing Return to Castle Wolfenstein and Doom. I'm not going to be looking over my shoulder wondering where the Fed is next, coming to arrest me. That's just not going to happen. But if you're uh, browsing Lollicon and accruing it and compiling it and uh, procuring it, you are doing that. You are skirting at the very edge of the law. Dick Masterson is a full-on retard, a full-on diddler. You've got to ask yourself why he's so passionately and with such veracity he's defending Digibro the pedophile. Why? Why would he do this? Why is he so passionate in this defence? It's fucked, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. About something leads to nothing. Yeah. Nothing leads yeah. to anything. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Nothing leads to anything. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So Diddler Dak says that actions have no consequences. He's shown the sheep a future projection of Gator, right? It's just bearing along. <laughs> nothing leads to nothing in Dick Masterson's world, right? Nothing, the actions have no consequences. Everything exists on its single isolated island. Todd, brainlet. Fool, and I can only assume that this man is lying to you because he doesn't believe that. No man in, no, no person, no human in history has ever believed that nothing leads to nothing. Like, waking up in the morning leads to you going to the bathroom for a shit, leads to you wiping your asshole. If you're everyone else in the world except for Faith Vickers there, like, actions lead to other actions. Things lead to other things but he's gonna say that nothing leads to nothing because oh well, uh, well masturbating to pictures of children doesn't lead to molestation of children yes it does it does it does like actions have consequences things lead to things i can't believe i'm having to say this but i'm in the twilight zone where is everybody are the monsters due on maple street today So we get the right answer. You can't draw things that are morally that are um, morally repugnant to me. It might lead to doing them. All the research says it fucking is the opposite. I still don't like it. Yep. Louder is funny, ladies and gentlemen. Screeching at the top of your voice to your resident sheep is hilarious. Ha! Ha ha! Ah! Quick! Quick! Whip out the Patreon. I need to donate my my, my life savings to Diddler Dax there. I need to keep funding the cabal that defends paedophilia. Yay! This is exactly what I need to do with my time and life. If you're in that mindset, I disown you. I will not accept any redemption that you have. After this point where you've heard Diddler Dax defend pedophiles with such a manner to be almost completely sickening, to actually make me feel physically sick because he does so in a way that's so passionate, that's so voracious, that's so, let's be real, complicit 
I can only imagine what mindset you're in if you're just constantly renewing the subscription on Patreon for Diddler Dax to continue saying shit like this. Fucking illustrations, illustrations make me so fucking insane because I know they're coming for my shit eventually. Uh, I exactly. know that I'm next. I know that I'm fucking next. Every so he's just said there, oh, I'm next. I'm next. You are next. <laughs> yes. He's afraid. He's afraid. That's why he's been buying guns. That's why he's been tweeting out that he's buying guns, by the way. Because he's afraid of us coming for the money. And I, God, I wish to God that the money is gone. Like, I, I don't want you to be allowed a platform. And I don't want people to be paying you to say shit like this. Because what you're saying here is fucked. It's fucked up. It is just totally fucked. Now, I know that you think you can walk on water. I know that you think you're Jesus Christ, savior, messiah, masterson, right? I know you've fucked yourself in the head to such a degree with all that LSD you've been tripping up every night. I, I know that's how you think, but you can't say things like this and not expect sane, rational, sober people to go, okay, you're canceled, goodbye. I'm not gonna funnel money to this, this pedophile defender. Now, now just listen to this. Listen to this. And, and, and let's just play the fucking challenge. Just go. Listen to this. The fucker on Twitter who came at me like, oh, you, why are you defending this? Like, this isn't... So I don't even know who that is. Yes. Keep saying that when they come for your shit, buddy. It's happening. If you let them fucking... Tr if you let them push the line, if you let them push the Overton window backwards, they're going to keep fucking pushing it over... So now it's pushing the Overton window backwards? For calling Digibro a pedophile? For calling a pedophile a pedophile? And what, and asking just simple questions of why is Dick Masterson defending this pedophile so much? Now that is pushing the Overton window backwards. Now, in my fucking world, pedophilia isn't on the right, you know? Isn't on, on the... <laughs> I can't believe I'm having to say this, but pedophilia is not a traditional conservative value in any th form or measure. And it shouldn't be. But but Digibro will openly say, and Masterson will openly say, that because you're because you're going for his money now, because he's been advocating for pedophiles, now that now you're trying to push the Overton window backwards. This is how much this side of the internet has been co-opted by these people. They're grifters. They're grifters. And they'll tell you with, a, with not even any hint of irony on their face that they're dissidents of the right, that they stand for principles and ideas. They'll say that with, without any sense of irony. or They will say when they're being criticised that all of their critics are trying to move the Overton window backwards. <laughs> Copesville, Copesville. Shit. I think you're right, but it makes, I think you're right, but it makes everybody very fucking uncomfortable. And it what, does. What also makes I, people... I like making it... You know what makes more people uncomfortable? Defending pedos. That makes people more uncomfortable than going after... Uh, your Patreon going after the money that's been funneled to you. Like, you're a fucked human being, Dax. You've got car mats on the walls and calling that a studio. You've got framed fan art of yourself. You've got Sean the Sheep. <laughs> like, uh, he's got his head in his hands, literally, as I've frozen this video. Yeah, I'm comfortable about it, because it doesn't make me uncomfortable I want to skip forward just quickly the to the point where <laughs> Josh jumps on the show uh, and Dax is... Uh, just vehemently defending pedophiles. Is devastating. Uh, me... What is this shit? If Gino is slapped on music over all of this clip... <laughs> what a faggot! <laughs> Fuck you, Gino! So, instead of being allowed to do an actual show now, I have to listen to this faggy music that he's overlaid over the top of Josh's and Dax's debate. <sighs> You've already heard my take on the show. Dax compares himself to Jesus unironically in a casual manner. Josh is the person of all people that has to disavow Dax for being this enabler of paedophiles. For... It's appalling, it's reprehensible. These people are just completely fucked. Uh, and you know what, Gino? Like, get your shit together. 
Like, if you can't clip that properly without butchering it with audio that you've slapped on to avoid copyright, to monetize it, then no, no, I do say no to Gino. Now, I have no means of reading the chat, ladies and gentlemen, so I don't know what you're saying. I don't even know if I'm actually live. Um, but I wanted to just round up what's been happening there it, on the show today. Is there anything else that I wanted to address? I actually don't know if there is. Uh, I suppose we could talk about Towering Toad. He was McJudas, the Supreme Snake. Now he's Towering Toad, calling out Digibro and Diddler Dax and the whole cabal for pedophilia and various other crimes against children. So Towering Toad, how long that'll last before he snakes again? Who knows? Who knows? But for this moment in time, it's Towering Toad. Towering Toad. Towering Toad. Slamming and smiting the pedophiles from on high. Towering Toad. Uh, and there's nothing else really that I can say. I will applaud you to keep an eye on Matt's Twitter, Matt Vickers' Twitter, and you can also keep an eye on Matt Jarbo's Twitter because uh, Monday Matt's doing some really fucking great... He's got the fire in his belly, ladies and gentlemen. He's, re he's ready. He's ready to bring down the crusade. He he's, he's joined the crusade and he's ready to bring down the grift as Monday Matt. Um, so he's doing a, a show, a daily show. It's beating Ralph and viewers and in Super Chats. Like, you would not believe. You would not believe the redemption art that Monday Man is having at this moment in time. Um, there's nothing else, I assume. Like, I don't know what else there is. Uh, apart from saying goodbye, it's been a great show. We've been handicapped by faggots like Say No to Gino, who can't simply clip something and leave it alone and allow us to commentate over it. Instead, he has to slather it with audio. I'm sorry. Apologize. But I really did want to do the analysis between... Uh, the interplay between Josh and Dax there. There we go. That's the end of the show. That's the end of the show. I'm going to go back to playing Witcher 3 on the Switch line. Um, there isn't anything to say. There's nothing left. There's something going on on the Kino Drome, I assume, uh, this Saturday. I don't know if PPP is ever going to come back into the fold now. I know he made that video where he declared that he was above it. He was above it all. He's going to go back to doing his cooking streams with Surfer and he's going to go back to doing like Ronnie Ralph reviews or whatever. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Uh, oh, yeah, let's talk about Phantom. Right, so uh, the, the Phantom organization situation. So here's my fucking... What's been happening with Phantom? Like, <clears throat> I said to PPP, like, shall we bring Phantom on a show again? Because I felt that the This Week in Nectar went all right that last time we did. And then PPP said, no, because this guy, uh, he's had like 10 people DM, like PPP's had 10 people DM him calling uh, Phantom like uh, this guy that's been like a, taking super chats from a pedophile, uh, uh, underage children in his Discord. Like, I don't even know what the fuck's going on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly open to have Phantom on to explain his side of the story. I'm going to be real. I haven't got the patience or the wherewithal to sit through the five, six hour streams that Phantom does every night with the, the British V there. Like, I just don't. <laughs> I, I just don't. But if he wants to jump on a show, clear his name, just explain what the fuck is going on, by all means. Because, we, we, you know, there's a, there seems to be like a little mini storm and a teacup there surrounding Phantom. And I don't necessarily know what it's all about. Um... Uh, what I will say on the matter is that I was pretty fucking second to my stomach when I saw that people were donating $100 super chats to him. Don't give these people your money, you know. I, I, I was also second that the moment he reached 1,000 subscribers, he sold out and enabled super chats. That was fucking reprehensible. That, that should not be forgiven. But, uh, I mean, I will not go as far as labeling him a pedophile, even though there seems to be this groundswell of people just DMing us at this moment in time, calling him such or... There's some sordid shit going on in that degenerate furry discord. I don't know what's going on. Um, that is literally it. Like, I'm trying to think what else there possibly is to talk about. And I don't think there is anything. Now, I'm going to have this League of Autists come and say, Yeah, I forgot to mention this. Uh -huh. You forgot to mention this. Uh -huh. John Kelly did a video. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen the John Kelly video, but Brian Dunn sent me it. Now, John Kelly's the guy that PPP and I called out yesterday. Uh, this man is like ex-gun guard from what I understand. And he's been 
languishing in obscurity since then, desperately trying to chase low-level clout to try and rebuild his name and finally prove to Ethan Ralph that I'm better than you. I'm better than you. Finally, I finally have my empire of mud. So who knows what the fuck is going on with John Kelly. I'm going to watch that, I assume. Or maybe I won't. <laughs> maybe I won't. Maybe I'll reach about five minutes in and the guy is giving this deranged take and I'll just say goodbye, goodbye. Back to obscurity, John Kelly. Uh, aside from that, take care. Peace out. Juice. Goodbye. Oh, I, I will also give a plug to... Uh, I think it's called He Jazz. Um, Hef and uh, Ear Juice's show. Like, that is a good show. That is a really good show. Uh, watch that. They did a recent one where they broke down the, uh, the events surrounding the sex tape, the events surrounding, like, War Ski uh and rand it was a good show they had simp on um the the, the mo impressionist they had him on simp sang a song i mean it's a good show it's about three hours long so it is quite a lengthy show but it's 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 all right it ain't bad it isn't bad um and if you know it's the number one home for rand impressions uh Ronnie Ralph impressions. It's it, it's a good show. Like, it is a good show. It's probably better than anything me and PPP are putting out at this moment in time. Because we cannot operate OBS. In fact, no. Let me just say that. I refuse to ever operate OBS. It's beneath me. It's beneath me to even attempt to use OBS. And on that note, goodbye.